One word from God will change your life. Stay tuned to A Daily Walk with Apostle Jason Leopard, And be sure to visit JasonLeopardMinistries.com. Growing higher. Growing higher. Growing together. Growing together. Hello guys, uh, this is uh, Apostle Jason here at you again today. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Um, God has been good to us. I um, want to check on you guys' diet, see how your diet is going before we get in the Word today. Um, I've been doing pretty good. I ordered me a jug the other day. Um, we're going to start drinking water by the gallon. Um, been doing a little bit of exercise, so I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. So... Um, uh, like I say, you can email us at jasonlepperministries at gmail.com and let us know how your diet is going or if maybe you got some tips you want to share, anything like that. But God, I believe God wants us healthy so we can attain wealth because uh, if you're not healthy, you're not getting wealthy. So anyways, uh, we're going to be in the Word today. We're going to talk about a subject called belief. Uh, believing that's what the subject's going to be called believing just believing you know how, how I think the title of this is going to be believing today and I got my uh, wife Penny Leopard will hear me today and we're going to be talking about a subject called believing uh, so um, anyways the subject believing you know it, it's just belief it's my wife and I'll let her tell y'all here in a minute but Believing is a, um, it's a trust deal. It's a trust deal. It's, it's trust in, in something you cannot, never see. So uh, anyways, uh, believing. And I think, uh, wasn't that chapter 3? John three eighteen. John three eighteen. We're going to read that right fast. And we're going to get into this. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask God, Lord, that your word go out into the highways and byways. Lord, we ask God, Lord, that this word goes out and reaches many people for Christ. And Lord, we just ask God, Lord, that the people believe in what you have wrote in your word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Yeah. Okay, 318 says, um, there is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. By anyone who does, and I'm reading from the uh, New Living guys, so bear with me. And it says, in 18, it says, There is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. Now, we read from that scripture right there, it starts with our trust and belief. You know, we believe if we believe what he says, then, you know, we're going to receive everything from God. And I'm going to let my wife share a little bit what she's got, because I think she has a lot on this thing called belief. Believing is a, uh, well, I'm going to read this right quick before she uh, starts right quick. Uh, this, this right here, I just found this. It says, believing accomplishes a central place in John the gospel. John does not use the noun faith that appears frequently elsewhere in the uh, New, uh, New, uh, New Testament. But uh, we also read right here in John's gospel, believing in Jesus is the trait of all true disciples. disciples. In, the John, the, in the John of gospel was the verb translated believe. It's often followed as the Greek, uh, Greek purpose in situations is into no peril exit. For this is an ancient Greek usage for John's faith is not a statue, but an investment in the people of Jesus' faith means accepting Jesus is and what is claimed to be. Faith continues commitment to let his call change the way we live. Now, faith is, his, faith is the work God wants from us. Now, faith is the only thing he wants from us, right? So if God just requires our faith and not our works, lest any man shall boast, then all we got to do is just believe, right? We got to believe that God can do it. So what do you have to share with us today, Penny? Give me just a minute. I'm sorry. 
what he had read earlier on John 3.18 uh, in the King James, it says, Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one only Son. One and only Son. And then that also, that was John 3.18. We can look right here in uh, the same book, same chapter. Oh, goodness, I'm sorry. Give me just a second. I'm having some trouble. Okay. And just like in John, okay, that's what I was going to. This goes also with John 3.16, hand in hand, which this is John 3.18. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And I'll just read those all together right there. Uh, 16, 17, and 18. For, and then this is John 3, 17. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. So you're saying the world was condemned, but if they believed through him, they might be saved. So really, it's not our works, it's our belief. It's our faith. Our belief, faith, belief, hope, trust are all kind of... Similar words, you know, have the same meaning. And right here, and it says, in 19, we should have just read the whole thing because it's hand in hand. It says, and this is the condemnation of the light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So you're saying if they believe in Jesus, they will not do the works of the flesh, but they'll believe the works that Jesus done. And, and the only way we can go to the Father and be saved is through Jesus. It was not our works that any man should boast. That's what he was talking about. But it's through the works of Jesus. So uh, the only thing we got to do, everybody says, well, what do we do? Just believe. Go on, Penny. And here in John 4 and 42, this is believing in things you hadn't seen. They were listening to the woman talk about Jesus. And now they said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said, now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the savior of our world. So the belief, trust, so really, hope. So, so really what, he, what he's saying in all the scriptures is, he's saying, look, if you believe in me and the works I've done, that's all you got to do. And, and I recall the woman with the issue of blood, she come up to Jesus and she touched Jesus and Jesus turned around. He said, somebody touch me because virtue come out of me. And that, what, what happened to the woman was this. Uh, I'll tell you what, guys. Let, let's get back to this. We're going to go to our commercial right quick. We thank God for Touch of the South, but here's our commercial with Touch of the South. Glory to God. We'll get back. Be back tomorrow. Let us take you down the Southern Road with Touch of the South Pearls and Treasures. Finding all your pearls and jewelry and accessory needs online. Visit us, www.touchofthesouthpearlsandtreasures.com. Find us on Facebook, Touch of the South Pearls and Treasures. All righty, guys, we're back. Uh, we're talking about believing. Believing. You know, what what is, you know, a lot of people think, well, how how do I come to Jesus? How do how do I come to Jesus? Do I do I do a certain thing? Do I, you, you know, matter of fact, it's said in the book of Romans. It says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, it started with belief. So you believed in something. So you confess to something that you believed in. Otherwise, that's what got you saved in the first place. So a Christian gets saved, they carry on their life, now to the point, and now if you believe that he come in your life, so believe that he can take stuff away from you and you can walk in the Spirit and be led of the Spirit. Go ahead, Penny. Right here in John 10, we're going to go start at verse 30. 
I and my father are one. Then the Jews took up stones to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works I showed you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? Well, he's asking what he's stoning me for. These Jews answered saying, for, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, but for blasphemy and because that thou being a man makest thou self God. And Jesus answered them, it, Is it not written in your law, I said, Ye are gods, if, if ye... If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest because I said, I am the Son of God. If I, <clears throat> if I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do... But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. So really Jesus comes to the earth. And really according to what scripture is saying, what my wife is saying, he comes to the earth and he's telling people, look, it's not through you you're going to be saved anymore because back in Genesis, man gave the authority to, to, to Satan in the garden. So really, we couldn't even save ourselves, but Jesus, I mean, God loving the world, as John three sixteen said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, but through him we might be saved. Listen, Believe so him. really, this relationship is, I mean... It's a it's a it's a type deal that we just trust in Him. Should I mean my, a lot of people say, well, you know, you don't you don't want to turn from your ways. You know, Paul's made a statement that uh, I want to do good, but I, something just don't let me. Otherwise, I think everybody gets to a point in their life they want to do good, they want to do what is good, but something this flesh does not let them. Now Jesus came that He set us free from the power of the flesh. Otherwise, the flesh wasn't nothing but sin. So Jesus being crucified and we being crucified with him, nevertheless, Jason don't live anymore, but Christ lives inside of us. So I think what he is saying here, Jesus can take every one of your sins away if you'll let him and give it to him and he'll, take, he'll, he'll destroy the powers of the works of the flesh. Otherwise, all we got to do is believe. That's basically all he's saying is just believe in me. And belief is trust. It's trust in me that I'm going to get you to heaven. Trust in me that, you know what, that, that porn that you're dealing with, the nicotine that you're dealing with, smoking that you're dealing with, stuff that you're dealing with, gossiping that you're dealing with, and you just can't get away from it. But I know a man who can. I know a man that can set you free from the power of darkness. You know what? It ain't nothing that you can do because nobody can break the power of sin except Jesus. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's Benny Hinn. I don't care who it is. And nobody says Benny Hinn does anything. All he does is believe. And that's where God is. You know, a lot of people have a measure of faith. They only go a measure. So God is saying right now, you know, are you going to believe me for this thing? Are you going to believe? So as my wife was reading all them scriptures, it all determines you're believing. That's it. It's almost like believing in the tooth fairy. You know, the tooth fairy was going to come get your tooth. Well, if you believed in hard enough, well, it happened. So that's all it, and all it boils down to. Do you believe that God sent his son to save you from sin? You got anything, Penny? Right here in John 20 and 25, it says, The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print 
of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. He was saying that unless he touched, Thomas was saying unless he, he was telling Thomas, he said, you, you, unless you touch me, can touch and see the nail prints, put your hands in my side where they pierce me. He said he would not believe. Right. Wow. He had to, he was arguing he had to see it to believe it. And it says, after eight days, again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then he says to Thomas, he's giving Thomas the chance because Thomas wanted to believe, but he had to physically see to believe. Thomas, reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. And reach hither thy hand, and put it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord, my God. He believed after that. And then Jesus told him, said, Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen me, and yet they believed. Thomas had to see it. I mean, he was still blessed to see it, but he, Thomas was doubting Thomas. That's what they come to doubt. He was a doubter. But he, he got the opportunity to physically do that, to, to strengthen his belief. But then Jesus said, blessed are those, blessed, blessed however you want to pronounce it, are those that believe that don't have to see me, that just knows of my works and knows of just believing that I am the Son of God. And I did die and rise again on the third day, and I died to set them free and to heal them and to free them of their sins. We just have to believe that. Yes, we have to believe that's it. We just have to believe that. And I think that if we believed, I think that we would change from our way. I think that we would just give it all to God. Because I, the, the, the thing is, if you want to be set free tonight, or this evening, or whenever you hear this, if you want to be set free, you've got to acknowledge that you have a problem. I've heard my wife say that so many times. You have to acknowledge that you have a problem. Once you acknowledge you have that problem, then you can be set free from it. So you got to acknowledge that you're a sinner. You got to acknowledge that you need a savior. So therefore, you got to acknowledge all this. You have to acknowledge that you are a sinner, that you need a savior. But once you acknowledge that all of your stuff in your life and you're doing wrong, and you need somebody to come in and clean it up. My friend, I know a friend who can. His name is Jesus. He can come in and take you from the power of sin and clean your life literally up. But guys, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, this is all we have today. Glory to God. Me and Penny are with you today. Glory to God. Thank y'all for tuning in. God bless y'all. And treasures. Finding all your pearls and jewelry and accessory needs online. Visit us www.touchofthesouthpearlsandtreasures.com. Find us on Facebook, Touch of the South Pearls and Treasures. The Connection Call. Keeping the connection strong with Apostle Jason and Penny Leopard. Every Thursday, at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Find out more by visiting www.jasonleopardministries.com. Want to become a partner with us? Go to www.jasonleopardministries.com forward slash partnership. Want to hear a word daily from Apostle Jason Leopard? Sign up at www dot jason leopard ministries dot com forward slash daily walk want to know more about the connection call go to www dot jason leopard ministries dot com forward slash the connection call there you will find how to download the app so you won't have to call in of these call-in numbers, find more information about the connection call, what it's about, 
the apps you can download and, and call in for free. All, all extra information will be there. You can call in globally around the world. You're listening to A Daily Walk with Apostle Jason Leopard.